you aren't getting clients, your list isn't growing, your followers are still really small. So what is going on with your brand, right? So today I'm talking about how to assess what's going on in your brand and how to ask the right questions. I'm gonna walk you through my 5C framework for a captivating and converting brand. Good morning. Man, it is so nice to be back here. We're almost wrapping up quarter one. And today I want to talk to you about how to assess if your brand is captivating and converting and maybe where that breakdown is, especially as we come to a close in quarter one, maybe you haven't hit some of your income or impact goals. I'm going to give you my framework that you can use at any point, And I would encourage you to use it once in a while to say like, what's working and what's not in this brand? How do I continue to develop my brand in a way that is, you know, helping me to hit my goals, right? And so there are five core pieces to an effective and successful brand. And I'm just going to go ahead and list them out for you right now. Um, one is that you compel with your story. Two, be clear. Three, stay cohesive. Four, be consistent. And five, inspire curiosity. Okay. And so if we have all of those pieces in place, then you will have a brand that captivates your audience and converts them into not just being curious, but into being clients or customers, things like that. So let's break those pieces down. The first piece again is to compel with story. And so every successful brand has a compelling brand story. This is also called brand messaging, but a story feels a lot easier, I think, for people to wrap their heads around because a lot of people know what makes them unique. They know what makes their story unique. And for others, like their brand messaging, like they're like, oh, I just sound like every other, you know, insurance person or real estate person out there or, you know, MLM person out there. Like, I, I don't know how to make myself stand out from the crowd, but they know that how their story makes them different. And so to call your brand messaging, your brand story is just, it's a mind trick really for us to wrap our heads around what makes us different. So your brand story originates from your distinct background. And I like to call this my three E's. This is your education, your expertise and your experience. That is your background that you're pulling from specifically. And then when you blend those experiences, your background with your values, your personality, your motivations, and in particular, your strengths. I'm a huge fan of Strengths Finder. If you don't know, know that by now, now you know it. <laughs> um, when you blend those things together, it forms a unique DNA that is your brand. And so I also like to think of it as that overlap space in where, you know, a Venn diagram, we did these in third grade, you have two overlapping circles and whatever's in the middle, that's the intersect, right? So where your experience and where your personality and where your strengths start to overlap, like that's what you should be looking at and where you have a story that reflects all of those things that's the story you want to share. Okay. So your brand story is simply a way to connect your audience to your business. It brings humanity to your brand messaging and your overall brand identity. And so people can feel insincerity. So the more you that you are, as you begin to share more about where you've come from and the more human and compelling that your brand will be. Does that make sense? What I'm saying this morning? I hope that that makes sense. Number two, is client clarity. So before you can create a brand that communicates your value that you're offering, because you do have worth and you do have value in your services, um, you need to be hyper clear, like laser focused clear on three Ps. That would be your ideal client persona, their pain, and their pleasure. So you need to know really who you're selling to. I like to think of this as a persona and sometimes even a real person. I like to think of approaching my pre-clients, potential clients as I would a friend or at a social gathering. I don't come up and be aggressive and you know be a total weirdo. I lean back, I ask intentional questions. I try to get to know them a little bit and figure out who they are, what they're about, and figure out if we're a good 
fit for friendship. And it's the same way with clients. So um, what, what do they do for fun? What are some of their hobbies? What is their form of self-care? Are you clear on like maybe a pain that they're experiencing? Maybe they're struggling with something um, and you know exactly how to alleviate that pain and get them to a place of relief or pleasure, right? So where are they at point A and where do they want to be point B and how do you get them there and why are you the best person to get them there? Does that make sense? So there's three P's. Who are you really talking to? What kind of car do they drive? Do they have kiddos? Um, do they have time to read blog posts or are they listening to podcasts on the go? How are they consuming their content? These are things that you need to be really clear on when you start to put your brand story out there and start framing that story in a way that they're going to connect with and identify with. All right. Number three, stay cohesive stay cohesive. Branding is not about putting your logo on every single piece of content that you've created and just calling that your brand. That is not branding. Um, regardless of what colors and fonts and graphics and overall design that you choose, um, an important pillar of branding is being cohesive. So um, this includes, you know, all marketing channels. This is your website. This is social media. This is your personal style, right? This is in-person events. This is marketing campaigns. Um, these are all the things that are related to your brand. And so your look, your feel, your tone, your voice, your presence has to look and feel the same across the board. When you do this, your brand appears more reputable. And it also becomes clear to those who are watching you because there are people watching you. My mom taught me this when I was little. No matter what you do and where you go, there are always people who are watching you and paying attention. So live like no one is watching and live well, right? Live with integrity. And so people start to watch you and they start to say, oh my goodness, I think this person's really serious about their brand and their business. And if they're putting this level of intentionality and thoughtfulness into their brand, how much more so are they doing this with their other products and services, or are they going to put that thoughtfulness and intentionality into working with me? When we look haphazard, when we look like we've slapped things together, people don't really feel confident about working with us. And so those visuals, consistency in your tone, your voice, the things that you're saying needs to be consistent. If you have a conflicting message and you're saying one thing like hustle, 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 and then rest, rest, rest all the time, it's going to be like, well, well, which is it? What do I do? Do I rest or do I hustle? And for me, I think we work hard and we rest. Um, so just to be clear on that, that piece right there. Um, so be consistent um, is number four. So being cohesive versus being consistent, they're, they're tied together, but they're a little bit different. Being consistent means you're doing this over a long period of time. So this does what we call building a know, like, and trust factor. And it is totally right and normal and expected for you to do these mini rebrands as you pivot and you grow and you shift in your business because you're up leveling and that is part of branding. It's going to evolve as you learn what people like, what they don't like, but it's also important to be, have this continuous thread as you change the way your, your brand looks or maybe feels, um, it still needs to, to be identifiable as you. And this helps, comes through with your messaging, with your tone and with just you. Um, but when people know you and they see you growing and evolving, they can still identify with you and your purpose and your values and your mission. And when co consumers or clients um, they feel like they know you, then they feel like they can trust you, even if you're pivoting, even if you're up leveling, right? And they'll still be more likely to purchase from you and work with you and even refer you to people. Here's number five. Number five, inspire curiosity. And so this one I don't feel like is obvious when we're talking about branding, but confusion is the opposite of curiosity. Okay. Confusion is the opposite of curiosity. And so whether or not you DIY your own brand or you work and hire a designer, work with and hire a designer, make sure that your overall brand visuals are clean, 
are easy to read and are attractive to look at, right? The colors and the fonts that you choose along with your logo, your images, these things play a huge role in ensuring that your brand is one that is captivating rather than confusing to your audience. And so when your brand identity is clean and attractive to look at, your audience will want to explore what you have to offer in greater detail, whether that's a freebie or a sample product or a small end offer that you have, or maybe one of your larger services. When they start to resonate with a feeling or a vibe that you're giving off and they start to see and experience your presence, your online presence or your in real life presence, then they are more likely to say yes to what you're offering because they're curious, they're interested, they want to know more. And that, my friends, is a captivating and a converting brand. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that it does. I, I wanted to try to break some of this core stuff that I do all the time down into something that is digestible and easy to understand this morning. Um, I want you guys to have a captivating and a converting brand. And so if you don't feel like you have people, you don't have a, a, any growth or engagement, maybe there's something going on with, with what is captivating them. And if you do have followers and you have some growth, but there's no conversion, there's no one buying, there's no one really opting into your list um, or taking a lot of action, then something isn't converting. And that probably has to do with your messaging. So I think it is time for a spring cleaning brand assessment, right? It's always good to take time to step back, assess, we're approaching the end of quarter one. So what is working and what is not working? And I'll, I will tell you, for people that are in their brand day in and day out, it is really hard for us to see our blind spots, even for myself. Um, so I want you to ask yourself these five questions. One, is your brand compelling? Is your brand story compelling? Two, do you have client clarity? Three, is your tone and your vibe consistent everywhere? Number three, sorry, is it cohesive everywhere? Is it cohesive everywhere? Number four, has your brand been consistent over time? And number five, does it inspire curiosity or does it causing confusion and people don't know what action to take? Okay, so branding is not necessarily a one-time investment. You don't have to work with a designer, but you should work with someone to help you get extra eyes on what you're doing. I can't tell you how many times I've jumped onto somebody's website and I've gone to click on one of their homepage buttons and it does not work. It is broken. It sends me to a 404 error page. Guys, this is super important to have having someone just walk through all of your brand stuff, whether it's your social media, your website, your messaging. Um, it's really helpful to do this. And so I want to help you get clarity around your brand. And I have a brand assessment mini package that I'm offering today to help you identify where that breakdown might be and helping you to either captivate or convert clients. And so normally this is $97, but today I have a 20% off coupon called 5C Framework. This is, Sarah says, this is great info. Thank you for always being on top of all the things to keep us updated in, in the know of today's appealing look for our business. Well, I don't know that I'm on top of all the things, but I certainly try to be on top of what is relevant to your branding and your business stuff for sure. And you are welcome. This is what I love to do. This is what I love to talk about. I eat, breathe, sleep this stuff. I think it's really fun. Um, so if you're needing support around that, you can get 20% off um, using the 5C framework coupon code. And um, I've dropped the link in the description as well to book that intensive. I have a couple slots in my calendar open for this. And if this is something that you are needing support around, I really do look forward to helping you hit impact and income goals. Um, this is something that I just love to do. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm so thrilled that you spent your time with me. If you enjoyed this content, you know what to do. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below as well as that little bell thingy because that will also alert you as to when I've got a new helpful video coming out. But that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one.